Hello everyone. Oh, excuse me, my throat's already silly and I haven't even started. Hang on a sec. Excuse me. <coughs> I think that's better. It's Friday morning here and it's a beautiful autumn day. The sun's shining brightly and the birdies are still singing and it's going to be a cool 21 maximum today, which I guess still sounds warm to you guys, but the mornings are cold and the evenings are cold, so it's not warm like a, a warm sun, sunny summer's day when it's a 21 maximum it's different but it, it's beautiful it's fresh and it feels really clean and delicious and I thought I was going to well I still am going to dress the babies in in a different outfit and of course it starts with undressing them from their last gorgeous outfit and as usual I fall in love with their simple little undergarments I just love seeing them like this so I left them like that and also I thought I might show you the bassinet properly. I don't, I've talked about it but I don't think I've shown you the netting and what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when it's closed and that's how I keep it so that there's no dust or anything on the babies. It's just really wonderful. This bassinet is the original bassinet I had for my first baby and he is now 43. He'll be 44 this year. Um, the the, as I said before, I think the um, the linen for it is new, um, but everything else is old except for that crook that holds up the the netting because somewhere that crook went missing when different grandchildren used this um, bassinet. So my friend and I went to the hardware shop and we bought a piece of aluminium tubing and bent it and sort of squashed it at the end to fit onto the little fitting that's that's there. It's not perfect and it annoys me because it wobbles around and it doesn't sit exactly in the middle um, but it's better than not having one because it means I can have the net. So I'm trying not to be fussy about it but it was done years ago and it still annoys me but anyway that's just me isn't it? A bit, a bit silly. So that's the bassinet from a distance. I might just open the netting and then we'll zoom in and see the babies just in their playing clothes. Here we go. There we are. That's how they look when I film them for you. Just like that with the netting back. I'll come in close now because you've seen enough of that. Let's zoom in and see what they look like. See how sweet they are. Does that do? That might do. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at that. If I come a bit closer, hold on to your hats girls, we're moving in. Don't be too scared, we're just getting a bit closer. How's that? Not too bad. You can't really see their feet properly. Never mind, I think that will do. You can see them well enough like that. Aren't they so adorable just like that? Just think the how I just love seeing them like this. So what I'll do is I'll dress them and come back to you so it will just be instantaneous. I'll see you very soon. Hello everyone, here we are back again now, babies all dressed, all dressed up to show you what they're wearing today. I, um, I've put bonnets on them for the first time in ages, I used to always put bonnets on, I suppose because it was summer maybe that's why I wasn't, and these are my favourite bonnets of all, I love these, they're just a little plain cotton bonnet, beautifully shaped, with, there's a texture to the fabric, it's probably got a name but I don't know what it's called. So they're the they're identical bonnets on them. And then on Pippa I've got a, it's a full outfit. So it's a little sh white short sleeved blouse and it's got a frill collar in a, I guess you'd call it a duck egg blue and there's a, a flower pattern in cream and grey on it. Let me just um, see if I can just show you the collar a bit better. There it is, there's the collar. And then over the top of that, there's a beautiful little um, garter knit, um, sti garter stitch knit white cardi. And then she's got the matching bloomers in, in the beautiful dark egg blue fabric. And Jonty's outfit is a put together outfit. It's um, just bits and pieces I had, which, you know, it's fun to do, isn't it? You dig around and see what goes with what. So he's got some little bloomers that are uh, a white um, with a kind of a like a, a light denim stripe running across them 
and he's got elastic around the legs and his does up with a little, uh, it's got elastic around the waist and there's a little tie, bow tie on it and under that is actually a bodysuit he's wearing with a frill collar with a blue edge and then over the top he's got a gorgeous blue big boy cardi because look at this, I don't know if you can see it but it's actually, oh you probably can't see it, it's a v-neck so so cute and of course he's got pockets like what self-respecting boy wouldn't have pockets and they're real pockets so he can carry frogs or whatever he feels like or even a hanky I'm not sure what John T would like to put in there probably a spare dummy knowing him um, so that's what they're wearing today pretty cute I think and I've left their feet bare because it's actually not cold and I put their cardies on because I felt like it felt like just showing their little cardies so there they are, and they've got a guess how much I love you bunny in between them. And I got that bunny at the post office of all places when I was there last time. I mean, it's not that many years ago that the post office just used to be a post office, and it didn't have stuff in it. And then they wanted to compete with ordinary shops, I suppose. So they have lots of things in there to tempt you while you're waiting in the endless queue. And... Um, I saw this bunny and he was in a, a little carry case so I bought the carry case. Oh it was just before Easter that's right. I think there was an egg in there that I gave to the grandchildren. Um, yeah so I just got him because he's cute so I thought I'd put him there between the two of them just for a change. And I thought I might just, I've been thinking about something I might just have a chat with you about it and it, it occurred to me after I watched Inez's live stream this morning. I didn't watch it live because I'm asleep when she's doing it because um, we're on opposite sides of the world so I'm never awake when she's live streaming but one of the things that she talked about with, with some of the people who were watching was why it seems that the cost of rebonds is going up and up all the time because she said that the kits aren't more expensive so she d didn't really know the explanation and I have a theory about it so of course I want to tell you my theory it's pretty hard to keep me quiet so this is my theory and it's kind of twofold um, for a start the kids are more expensive not a great deal more expensive not enough to account for the increased cost in making reborns but they are because they're so much better now you know, there's so much more detail, they're so much more accurate compared to normal, ba you know, proper babies, and, you know, they are more expensive um, than they used to be. But that's that doesn't account for anywhere near the increase. I think one of the things is the fact that they are more detailed means it takes a lot longer to, to paint and reborn them. It's much more complicated than it used to be. Plus, techniques get better and better and we all expect more and more on our reborns, don't we, You know, than, than we used to. So I think that's part of it. It takes longer to make them. Not that um, you ever get your money back for the hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks you put into them, of course you don't, you, you can't charge for your time because it just, you know, artistry doesn't work that way. We're not like, we're not laying a concrete path and charging per hour for the job. You know, it just takes time and, and you can't get your money back for the time. But it does take longer, so I guess artists do take that into account. It definitely takes longer and there's a lot more skill involved now than, than there used to be just because expectations have changed so much. So I think that's one thing. And then the other thing that, that I often talk about is that because there are inexperienced artists, you know, who are selling their dolls, um, and there seems to be such an appetite for buying these dolls that people pay way, way, way too much for someone who's only just started making dolls. And of course that's not everybody, you know. I've just seen some examples on eBay that are clearly done by someone who doesn't have a lot of experience and they're asking a lot of money for them and they seem to get the, that money and I think when experienced artists see that happening they think well you know if if someone will pay that high price for a dodgy doll my doll is much 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 better quality I need to charge accordingly and I have a feeling that that's what um, that's what's driven the price up I think if people, oh, but you can't do anything about it really because a buyer um, just wants what they want. They don't, 
even the buyers are not experienced, which means that they will pay too much money for a doll that is clearly not well done. And I think that's a big reason why the price has been pushed up, because there are so many people who say, I'm an artist now, I can paint a doll. And really, I mean, there are some people who are naturals, there certainly are, but it still takes a long time, and I would say it takes at least a couple of years, if not more. I mean, I've been painting for... I think it's coming on for eight years now. And I'm, you know, you still learn it with every doll. You do something a little bit different or try a new technique or tweak something. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a learning process. And to say that you're brilliant after two months is just, it's not possible. It's just not possible. And I think if they charged what, what was a fair and reasonable price for, you know, a doll um, that's only their first or second or third or fourth or fifth, then I think that would bring the prices back down again. People could buy a less expensive doll from a less experienced artist and experienced artists wouldn't feel they had to charge so much because their work is so much, so much, so far superior to the, the new artists and that comes with just time and experience. Also it does come because some people are natural artists and some aren't. So I think, to me, that would explain a lot about why prices have gone up so much. Um, I've watched them go up drastically, really, and I think, whoa, it's, these dolls just, you know, not all of them, but some of them just aren't worth the money that is being asked for them. But if someone is willing to pay, then of course people are going to up their prices. That's just what happens, isn't it? Um, so that's my answer. I think that is my answer, yes, to what Ines was talking about. I've been thinking about it for a couple of hours just while I've been doing other jobs and dressing these two monkeys. And I think that could be why the prices have gone up so much. So I just go back to the, the buyer beware. Just try and really, really look at the pictures that you're seeing in the listing. Really have a good, good look because you can't make assumptions that it's going to look fabulous when you get it. And, you know, my heart hurts at the thought of someone getting a, a doll that they've been so excited to have and then receiving it and seeing all the flaws and the things that they don't like about it. That would just be so sad. And um, I would like everyone to, be, to know what they're getting. And, yeah, that's the end of my story, I think. I think that might be the end. And also, I've got an ugly red... Um, picture on, on my camera that says the battery is low. So I guess I've said what I wanted to say. I've told you about the weather, haven't I? It's just beautiful. It's a gorgeous day. I've got a lot to do today. I'm working on a doll for a mummy who's very keen to have him or her. And um, I have to go and pick up some grandchildren this, this afternoon from school and kindy. And the day always disappears so quickly on those days. It gets chopped in half, really. So I'm just zooming around trying to get everything else done and organised. So thank you very much everybody for coming, for looking at my babies, how they were before they got dressed up and seeing my bassinet and hearing the story about that and for listening to me go on and on again about inexperienced artists and prices being too high. So thank you very much all of you. Thank you so much for, for visiting me again. I do love having you with me. And if you're new, I hope that I'm not too boring for you. I hope there's enough interest to show you. At the moment, I just have these two babies that I made some time ago. And I love them and I love their outfits. I absolutely love dressing them. But soon, in a couple more dolls' time, I will be making another doll for myself. But that's a little way off. I need to get some other orders out of the way. So hopefully you know, you'll, you'll stick around and, and watch my videos. If you don't want to, that's fine. You know, I, I think the people who watch me are, are my friends. That's how I look at it. And the people I watch are my friends too. So there you are, everybody. I'll stop nattering on now and say goodbye to you. And thank you so much for being here with me. So please take care and be kind to each other. Bye-bye.